tonight. And uh, I want to start off and just thank uh, Carl and Kathy uh, for their teamwork. You know, I've been involved with teams all my life. And when I first started uh, the X-39, Joe Fazio called me and uh, he was part of the Notre Dame team and a little bit younger than I am. And as I got going, uh, Rich Tolman, one of my uh, teammates from Notre Dame and, and his wife, Ginger, really helped. So you guys have really epitomized what a team is and, and wrapped yourself around me because I had no clue technology, science, anything. And I've got a couple of people that I've, that I've brought aboard that's even worse than I am. And she knows who she is. But uh, so I do want to thank you. And, and I'm not sure if uh, if you can see uh, Bob Galasso. Uh, Carl, I, I don't have the opportunity to see the whole thing. So I don't know how many people are here. Can you see Bob anywhere? Uh, he was supposed to join us. He said he's going to try. Bob, let me let me look him up while you're speaking, and then okay. um, we'll make him co-host as well, and he can join you. Yeah, and, he said and, he would. Uh, tell everybody, um, tell everybody your background, Mike, and yeah, uh, um, you to the past. I uh, grew up, I grew up in Erie, Pennsylvania, went to Cathedral Prep High School, an all boys Catholic school in Erie, Pennsylvania, and started playing football my sophomore year, and had the opportunity to, uh, because of my mentor Tony Zambrowski, had the opportunity to go to University of Notre Dame and play under Eric Parsegan and uh, graduate from high school in 1966. So you can do the math and see how old I am, but I'm feeling younger every week. And I uh, had the opportunity to play 11 years in the National Football League, uh, seven with the uh, Green Bay Packers. And that was uh, kind of the transition. Vince died my rookie year and he was already, already in Washington. A lot of you young people never, never heard of that, but some of you old folks know about the Packer history. and. And I played seven years with Green Bay and had the opportunity to be traded and went to the Oakland Raiders and played for John Madden for two years. That was the epitome of my, my professional sports to see how a, a professional team is really run. Then my last two years with the New York Giants. And I have, uh, I've experienced uh, many, many injuries in the National Football League and playing football and, and just being active. And I've had 18 surgeries, probably 13 of them are football related. I've had every joint replaced, my knees, three hips, and my shoulders in the last five five years. So I'm I'm blessed to have that because I can get around and I'm not in a wheelchair like some of my friends are. And but I've been in pain, you know, most of my life. And so I look back at it, I, I kind of look at this analogy. In 1971, I was reborn again spiritually. And that was through a couple of friends of mine, the late Bart Starr and Carol Dale who invited me to the chapel program in the National Football League. You know, I think I'm a, like a lot of people, maybe on this on this, on this this Zoom call, went to church all the time, you know who God was, know who Jesus Christ was, try to be good, and I failed many times. And getting pretty frustrated with my faith, and a lot of my friends at Notre Dame were the same way, and, and other different faiths that I, that I faced and that I got to know people. And through that chapel program in the National Football League, I came to know and understand what a personal relationship with Jesus Christ was all about. And that light bulb went off for me, and I listened to that for about a year and understood that, you know, I mean, didn't make a choice and get off the fence. And I did that in uh, June of 1971 at an FCA camp. And when I finally understood that uh, that God loved me unconditionally and that my performance was uh, not based upon his love for me and it was unconditional, that was a light bulb for me. And I went back in my faith and it became alive, and, and I've been involved in that for a long time. And, and so this past uh, eight months, I kind of look at it this way. I've been, uh, I've been, I've been reborn physically uh, because of the X-39 patch. And when Joe uh, called me, I was a little taken back uh, because when he called me, he says, Mike, I'm not in pain anymore. Come on, Joe. He says, no. I said, well, what's the deal? And I've known Joe for a while. And, you know, we've been through, you know, my generation has been through a lot of uh, network marketing. And so when he told me it was network marketing, I'm going to be very frank here. I turned it off. I said, I'm not interested. I don't have time. I'm in the ministry full time. I have Mike McCoy Ministries. And my mission statement now is to reach students in Catholic schools with a message of faith, hope, and encouragement. We've been doing that for many, many, many years. And it's very rewarding for me. And God has opened that door because of my platform he has given me through Notre Dame NFL. It has nothing to do with me. It's all about God and the Holy Spirit. As he started talking about this patch that was patented, I said, okay, you know, I understand science. And he kind of explained, and I was on a call with Carl, and he started talking about these copper peptides and, and all this stuff. And I said, okay, you know, I'm I'm not a scientist, I have a degree in economics, but don't let that don't let that fool you. I can't balance my checkbook. So I um kind of listened, and I said, okay, I'll try. You know, and so I got the patches. I went for the diamond thing because I figured, what the heck, you know, I'm going to need this stuff for a long time because I'm old. And uh, Dave Schmidt says you need, uh, 
you need uh, you need for every month ten years for every month. So you know seventy seven months or eight months. So I went for the went for the diamond patch and got the patch and I started wearing them. And you know my experience was kind of different than a lot of people. I actually got into pain more. And uh, after about a month on the patch, uh, my wrist was killing me. I had a lump on my wrist and I had a gangrene cyst. My body was hurting, you know, because I'm very active and I lift weights. I've lost a lot of weight the last three years. I'm around 305 pounds now, played around 285. And I played pick and I, and I was playing pickleball before the patch. And, and, and that was, you know, pretty tough for me to get around. But I was doing it because I wanted to stay active. I want to go out in this life with feet first, not, not on a wheelchair first. And the Lord willing, that will happen. And uh, so the first three months, it was like my body was going through withdrawal and in uh, and, and a lot of pain. And I was going to a chiropractor, a trigger point therapist. It wasn't helping. But I kept at it because, you know, Joe says, and Carl, you said, and, and, and Rich and Ginger. And, you know, I do want to give a shout out to uh, Ginger, Rich's wife, because uh, she is incredible. And she's helped a lot of my downlines. So we talk about this team concept. And um, so after about four months, after about three months, after about two months, the I just put the patch. I didn't know what to do. So I took the patch off my neck and I stu stuck it right on my wrist. And there was a lump there about two inches and I had a ganglion cyst. And, and I just kept it on her for two days because so I didn't know what I was doing. And I'm going to tell you, after two days, the pain was gone. That was about the month and a half. So I, that's why I kind of stuck at it. And I'm going to tell you now, after six months, there's no lump, no, no, no ganglion cyst. And uh, and then all of a sudden, after my fourth or fifth month, the pain started to ease. I haven't been to a chiropractor in five or six weeks. I do like the trigger point therapist. I'm going to Myrna. She's also you know, using the patch. And um, and the pain is about 90% less right now. I was in a lot of pain. And, uh, I, and I'm just amazed at it. And a lot of people look at me and say, Mike, you're looking younger. And I, about five weeks ago, I went to Legacy Weekend at the University of Notre Dame and Coach Freeman, uh, the very first coach in Notre Dame history to invite the old guys back for a weekend. It's during the spring game. And we get a chance to meet with the team on Friday. And I was there last year. I was the same weight, lifting weights. And the only difference was I've been wearing the patch for like eight months. And everybody came up and he said, Mike, you're walking better. You look better. And I said, well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And, I, and I've gotten that many, many times. And as, as some of you have done the math, I'm 75 years old. And, uh, and my pickleball days are better. And I've been playing with a group of 65 and older in my little subdivision here. And before the patch, I played maybe one or two games. I had to sit down. I was so tired and in pain. As the patch started to work, after about five months, my energy level exploded. I said, wow. I mean, it was so noticeable. It was noticeable to the guys that I played with. You know, we have a 65 and up group, and I'm the oldest guy. And I'm playing two hours every Monday and Wednesday. And a lot of these guys say, Mike, what did you do? I said, I've just been wearing this patch, the X39. So I've got like four or five of them on the patch. Unfortunately, a lot, you know, there's like eight or nine guys, and the other guys didn't do it, but I don't know why. Why? I have no idea why people don't even use this patch. And so uh, my story is uh, pain free. Uh, when I heard uh, David Schmidt talk about age reversal, I said, eh, you know, I can think maybe slowing the age process down a little bit, but I'm telling you, I'm starting to believe it. And, uh, you know, I, I know I'm not going to leave this earth uh, alive, that's for sure, but at least I know where I'm going. But now the quality of life is outstanding. And uh, a couple other things that happened to me is, uh, I, I don't know if you can see it online, but I'm getting some brown, brown uh, hair coming in on my eyelids. And I go to a barber shop, and she uh, been cutting my hair for the last four or five months. And she said about three months ago, she said, Mike, you know, the little bounce spot you have on the top, it's getting dull. And I said, that's not good. She goes, no, that's good. I said, why? She said, it means your hair's going to grow. I said, really? And she knows that I was on the patch. And uh, which reminds me, I got to get back to her. Let me write up, <laughs> let me rub myself a little note here. And, uh, and so th th three weeks ago, I went back in. She goes, Mike, you have hair on the patch. You got this brown spot coming in. Your hair is fuller, and uh, people have been noticing that. So it's really helped my quality of life, uh, and I'm very, very busy because I do travel a lot. And uh, this fall, uh, and, and I and I've sent out a lot of emails. I said, you know, this X39 is going to help me to stay in my ministry because physically it's very draining to travel and to speak and to speak in front of hundreds and hundreds of students and read the cards and get back and. Those times in the fall and the spring when I do that, it's very, very physically taxing. But now I feel that I can do it for a long time. And uh, so I thank God for that. 
And uh, I don't know if Bob Velasco was on here. Uh, Carl, have you found him? Is he on? Is he on our on our on our little thing here? I no. Can hear 